This is Ethics, outcome number three for Financial and Technology Literacy, seventh grade. Okay, we're going to start off with some terminology, some vocabulary words. Vocabulary words in this presentation are in yellow, bold, and underlined, like ethics. Ethics is the beliefs about what is good and or what is right or wrong and what is good or bad. In other words, ethics is making sure that you do the right thing. Business ethics, uh, it is concentrated on uh, just about how businesses uh, react to their customers and their employees. So it's rules about how businesses and their employees are expected to behave. So ethics itself could be uh, in your personal relationship, in your school relationships, uh, in your family relationships, all sorts of different things. Business ethics is really about that workplace and how uh, people interact with one another at the workplace. Ethical behavior is how you act. So it's a behavior conforming to your beliefs about what is right and good. So if you believe that something is the right thing to do uh, ethically, that would be your ethics, but then your behavior, your ethical behavior would back that up. So you're not going to, to do something like saying, breaking the law is wrong, and then you're going to turn around, get in your car, and, and uh, break the law by speeding. Uh, your ethical behavior will follow what your uh, ethics say is right and wrong. On the flip side of that, we have unethical behavior. Unethical behavior is behavior conforming to a beliefs about what is bad and wrong. Instead of right and good, it's bad and wrong. So it's just basically the flip side. If what you're doing isn't ethical, then by default it's unethical and vice versa. A code of ethics is a set of rules or guide guidelines uh, about how uh, members of an organization or uh, employees of a business should act. Uh, for example, if you've ever downloaded a, an app to install it on your phone or your Chromebook or anything like that, and it comes up with a term of use agreement or term of service agreement, uh, that's a code of ethics. It basically spells out uh, your rights and your responsibilities, how you should use this app and uh, what your recourse is if you don't uh, uh, have a good experience with the app uh, and things of that nature. Uh, behavior guidelines, whether those be behavior guidelines that are in like course syllabi at school or uh, other things uh, that ways that you should act uh, then uh, those are all code of ethics as well, if they're written down. And then finally, we have the middle school student handbook or family handbook that is basically a, a code of ethics book for uh, behavior for students at, at the middle school. And there's also a faculty handbook as well. So we have our own code of, of ethics and code of behavior uh, that uh, teachers and, and other staff members uh, are required to follow. Morals. Morals refers to a person's personal philosophies about what's right and wrong. So ethics is what you have decided is right and wrong. Uh, your morals is the philosophies behind that. It's why you think whatever is right or wrong. So you might think that uh, something is morally right or morally wrong based on uh, your uh, upbringing with your parents or your religious affiliation, or some other um, reasoning that you came about uh, to show uh, or how you figured out what is right and wrong. Principles are specific and per pervasive boundaries for behavior that should not be violated. Uh, it's that red line that you're not going to cross. Um, and in the United States here, we have certain principles that we try to, to uphold freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, basic human rights. Um, th those things are things that as uh, citizens of the United States, we say that those things should not be taken away from us. 
That line should not be crossed. Values. Values are beliefs or practices about what is desirable, worthwhile, and important. So you might think that honesty is important. It's a desirable trait to have. And so that you're going to try to practice honesty in your own uh, dealings and your own behaviors, but you're also then going to uh, look for that same value in your friends and acquaintances and family members and other people that you interact with. So let's look at ethics and values. The ethics applies to how a person should behave. We believe that a person should behave in this way because it's right or wrong to do so. Values, on the other hand, is uh, your personal inner judgment that determines how you're actually going to behave. So if we take an example here, ethically speaking, there might be a person that says, uh, laws are meant to be followed and there's uh, no reason to break the law. And then uh, that person might then hop in their car and be late for work and then uh, break the, the speed limit while they're trying to get to work. Now the person, their ethics says this is the right thing to do, but then in the actual specific situation, they feel that there is something more important than following that ethical behavior or ethical principle. And so they decide to break it because they don't want to get fired. Uh, they have to make it there on time or, or else they'll get fired. And so they're going to speed this one time because uh, the result is uh, better than if you follow the uh, ethical guideline. So our values put our ethics into action. Our ethics is like the theoretical, where the values is our actual behavior, our, the literal, what we actually do. So there's a section in your notes on ethics. Ethics is. Ethics is not doing what you have the power to do. So just because you have the power to do something doesn't make it the right thing to do. If you're stronger, bigger, uh, more intimidating than another person, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right thing to do to cut in front of them in line because you know that they're not going to uh, call you out on it. So just being having the power to do something and be able to get away with it doesn't make it the right thing to do. Ethics is not doing what you have the right to do. Sometimes you have the right to do something, but it's not the right thing to do. So if uh, somebody wrongs you in some way, uh, somebody uh, trips and falls and, and scratches the side of your car door and, and uh, puts a scratch in there so your door is going to have to be repainted, you have the right to sue that person for it. Uh, and have them pay to, to get your door repainted. But that might not be the right thing to do. If they slipped and fall and fell and it wasn't necessarily their fault because it was a, a faulty sidewalk or it was icy out or something like that, then you might uh, decide to just forgive them and pay for the repair yourself. Uh, even though you have the right to take them to court and sue them and uh, force them to pay for it or have some other punishment, that might not be the right thing to do because of the circumstances of, of how it all happened. Ethics is also not doing what you want to do. Sometimes an ethical person chooses to do more than the law requires and less than the law allows. So it could be that uh, um, in a situation that the law requires you to uh, do something uh, and you decide to do more than that. So you, for some reason, you get, uh, you break the law and you get sentenced to 20 hours of community service. Uh, and then your uh, 20 hours of community service is done, but whatever, wherever you were serving, uh, they still need your help. So you continue to uh, go and do the community service or, or volunteer and stuff like that, even though your sentence is over. Uh, because it's the right thing to do, because they still need the help. Uh, you know, you, you're not forced to do it anymore, 
because your your service is up, your time is up for what the the judge said you had to do. But uh, you decide to continue because they need the help. Business ethics is uh, what our main goal of this outcome is. Uh, And what's the goal of business ethics? It's to motivate businesses to do the right thing, basically. Uh, It's to motivate businesses and everybody who's participating with that business to follow the laws and regulations uh, that are concerned with that business and professional practice. So doing what you're supposed to be doing, uh, whether because you're following some type of uh, law or policy or something like that. Um, but uh, the the goal of business is to make money. So most of the time, the goal of ethics is to help you to act the right way so you can make more money. So how do you know what the right thing to do? Uh, we have nine questions here uh, that you can ask yourself and Depending on the answers to these nine questions, then you can most of the time figure out whether it's something that's ethical or not. The first question is, what does my conscience say? Hey, when you first uh, are approached to do something or asked to do something in business, uh, whether it be from a boss or somebody else, uh, what does your inner voice say? What does your first gut reaction say? Uh, Is that something that sounds like it's something good to do or not? Number two. Could this thing hurt anybody? Uh, Could it hurt anybody else? Could it hurt you? Uh, Could it uh, damage somebody's property? Could it hurt them emotionally and not physically? Uh, If it's going to hurt somebody in some way, then it's probably not an ethical thing to do. Is it fair? Is this going to, this activity going to give uh, somebody an unfair advantage? Uh, Like insider trading? telling uh, insider information or secret information, uh, is that going to be fair to the business or to the competition or to customers or anything like that? Uh, If it's going to give some kind of uh, unfair advantage to anybody, then it's probably not an ethical thing to do. Number four, would it violate the golden rule? And the golden rule says, do unto others as as they would have do unto you. In other words, how would I feel if somebody did that to me? So if you were thinking about uh, pulling a prank on somebody uh, at work and uh, you stop and think, well, how would I feel if that person or another person did that to me? Uh, would I be embarrassed? Would I be ashamed? Would I be angry? What, how would I feel? And uh, if it's not something that you would enjoy feeling, then it's probably going to be the same thing for the other person. And doing it is probably not an ethical thing to do. Number five, have I ever been told that it's wrong? Has somebody told you that what you're contemplating on doing uh, is wrong in the past? Uh, Was it a parent? Was it a teacher? Was it a counselor? Was it a police officer? Uh, Was it uh, somebody that you respected? Was it your peers? Uh, Was it a celebrity? Did anybody ever say, just don't do it? Number six, deep down, how do I feel about it? Now, question one was, what does your conscience say? That's uh, your first gut reaction. After you've had time to think about it for a little bit, contemplate the the, uh, action and the consequences of the action, how do you feel about it now? After you've done a little bit of an analysis of it. Uh, If you are still hesitant, then that's probably a good indicator that what you're thinking about doing is not ethical. Number seven, how will I feel about it myself later if I do it? So if I do this thing, am I going to feel guilty about it later? Am I going to feel ashamed or remorseful? Uh, If I am, then that's probably an indicator that it's not an ethical thing to do in the first place. Number eight, is it legal? We have laws for reasons. Uh, We have laws on the books so that everybody can understand that there are certain things that everybody has agreed is not something that is the right thing to do. So it's not ethical and therefore it's not legal. So if there's already a law saying that you can't do it, then you don't have to go through these questions or anything uh, because it's pretty much already spelled out. It's not going to be ethical if it's already illegal. And number nine, What would adults I respect say about it? 
So maybe not your parents, but a teacher, a counselor, a principal, a coach, uh, a member of a, a, a clergy or other religious organization, uh, things of that nature. What would they say about it? It uh, could be that, you know, you look up to your uncle or your aunt. Uh, what would they say about it? Would they say that it's a good thing to do or not? Okay, so now we have the six pillars of character. On the test that you're going to take over ethics, you're going to have to be able to give me all six pillars of character, as well as some examples of ethical and unethical behavior that fall within these pillars. So on this first slide here, I'm just gonna list them, and then I have uh, explanations of each ones later. So the first pillar of character is trustworthiness. Second one is responsibility. The third one is caring. The fourth one is fairness. The fifth one is respect, and the sixth one is citizenship. So once again, trustworthiness, responsibility, caring, fairness, respect, and citizenship. Under trustworthiness, that's trying to be honest and ethical in all of your business dealings. So you're not going to try to sell somebody something that uh, isn't right for whatever solution they're trying to find. Uh, you're never going to reveal any proprietary information. If you work at KFC, you're not going to try to, to take the uh, recipe for the 11 herbs and spices and try to sell it to uh, Popeye's or, or some other chicken establishment. You're not going to tolerate lying, stealing, or deception, or whether that coming is coming from yourself or coming from customers or coming from your salespeople or anything like that. Uh, you're going to try to be honest and above board in all of your um actions and dealings uh, in the business. Respect. You're going to treat everyone with courtesy, politeness, dignity. You're going to look at people's individual characteristics uh, and their cultural uh, differences and uh, take all of that into account uh, as you try to make a decision about whatever is uh, the issue in the workplace. Uh, you're going to treat everybody as an individual, not lump them all together as employees or as a certain ethic, ethnic stereotype or, or other things. You're going to listen to their individual needs and try to do what you can to meet those. So if you're a supervisor and you have the decision-making um, capability there or responsibility, then you're going to listen and communicate openly with, with everybody that's involved to build mutual respect for one another. And uh, the goal here is long-term relationships. If you can't build long-term relationships uh, with your employees, then they're gonna quit. And then you're gonna have to start all over and train new people and do things all the time. So you, your goal as a boss or as a manager is to retain your employees uh, and keep them there so you don't have to uh, keep starting over with new employees all the time. Responsibility. Don't make excuses. Uh, if it's your decision and something goes wrong, then you want to take responsibility for that. Don't blame it on somebody else or don't make excuses uh, of, for the outcome. You're going to accept responsibilities if something does go wrong. Uh, if it was your decision to send somebody home early because it was slow uh, and then it got really busy and he got swamped, then you're going to step up and say, hey, that was me. I, I made that call, and, and so we didn't get these things done because it just got too busy. You're going to fulfill all your obligations. If you are expected to get something done, and if that's on your your list of tasks for the the shift, then you're going to make sure that you do your best to try to, to fulfill all those. And when we're talking with our customers, we're not going to overpromise. So if, if you're selling a product, you're not going to tell them that it'll do all this in the kitchen sink as well if it can't do that. You're going to uh, truthfully tell what the product can and cannot do. And if that's a deal breaker with the customer, then the customer is going to respect you for being honest. Uh, and the next time that they have an issue, they're going to come back and try to talk with the honest person and not get sold something that, that's not going to work. Under fairness, we're going to listen intently to the concerns of customers, employees, and vendors, depending on where we're at in the business. Uh, 
if there is an issue, we're going to try to make sure that it's fair for everybody concerned. So if you have a couple of employees that want to have the same day off, let's say it's for homecoming or prom or, or Christmas or Thanksgiving or any holiday or something like that, where a lot of employees are one off, then you're going to figure out some way to, to work with it so that the same person isn't always working those days. Uh, you're going to um, rotate through those days where a lot of people want off and so that everybody takes their turn working those days. Under caring, you're going to truly care about uh, the customers, your employees, if you're the boss, and vendors. Uh, you're going to uh, listen to their concerns. You're going to um, do your best to, to meet those concerns uh, or those the issues that they're having. Once again, you're committing to a long-lasting relationship. Uh, the longer you can retain or keep your employees, the better and more productive they're going to be. Uh, and the more profit that you'll make if you're the owner of the business. Uh, if you can keep a vendor for a long time and you have a good relationship, good understanding, then the vendor is going to ultimately uh, give you better deals and give you insight on things that are coming down the road later on and things like that. So, uh, And if you can uh, show that you care about your customers, they're going to come back and keep on buying. Under citizenship, we have play by the rules. Whatever those rules are, if it's a law that you have to follow or a administrative policy or some uh, tradition uh, that is uh, in the workplace that's always done this way, you're going to make sure you play by those rules uh, and not try to uh, cheat or, or uh, somehow uh, get around the competition by doing something that's not ethical. You're going to keep proper records. There's a lot of things that uh, have to be written down, and you're, especially when, when it comes to money and things, money and taxes, but any type of thing. So you're going to keep proper records and, and follow the procedures that they say to do. So you're not going to have your own creative way of doing accounting and things. You're going to follow the, the proper uh, procedures and standards that are out there. You're going to follow the laws and regulations that are there uh, the, to the best of your ability. Uh, and you're not going to uh, do any shortcuts or anything else. And we're going to stop there for today.